we look at some more examples of transformations. For this, uh, let us first consider the hyperbolic cone. So the hyperbolic cone is given by the set of all vectors u in Rn such that u transpose pu is less than equal to c transpose u square and uh, c transpose u is greater than equal to 0. So hyperbolic cone is only defined for p positive definite. So the question arises whether hyperbolic cone is a cone or is it a convex set or not. So let's try to answer that question. Let's assume that there are two points u1 and u2 that belong to H. Then it this implies that ui transpose p times ui is less than equal to c transpose ui square for i equal to 1 comma 2 and likewise c transpose ui is greater than or equal to 0 for i equal to 1 comma 2. So this is the implication of u1 and u2 belonging to h. Now we need to show that the point u equal to theta1 u1 plus theta2 u2 for theta1 theta2 greater than or equal to 0. So now we need to show that this point u also belongs to h. So the question is does u belong to h? To show this we can simply observe that this constraint can be written using the square root decomposition of p. So remember that for any symmetric matrix, symmetric positive semi-definite matrix, we have that p equal to square root p times square root p where square root p is also symmetric positive semi-definite. So using this transformation we can write this as ui times square root p times square root p times ui is less than equal to c transpose u i square which is equivalent to saying that since c transpose u i is greater than or equal to 0 so this is equivalent to the l2 norm of square root p u i is less square is less than or equal to c transpose u i square or l2 norm of p square root p times ui is less than or equal to c transpose ui right so this is the alternative way to write uh, the hyperbolic cone constraint and this implies that so what can we say about square root p times u so this is equal to norm of square root p times theta 1 u1 plus theta 2 u2 and now you can apply the triangle inequality to conclude that this is less than or equal to norm of square root p theta 1 u1 plus norm of square root p theta 2 u2. I should be putting theta 1 u1 and theta 2 u2 in brackets because theta 1 is a scalar, u1 is a matrix, sorry u1 is a vector and then use the homogeneity property. So this is equal to theta 1 times square root p, norm of square root p times u1 plus theta 2 times norm of square root p times u2. So this is uh, less than or equal to theta 1 times c transpose u1 plus theta 2 times c transpose u2. So here we have used the fact that theta 1, theta 2 are greater than or equal to 0. And then finally this is equal to c transpose times theta 1 u1 plus theta 2 u2. So this is equal to c transpose u and therefore we have the 
required inequality we have that norm of square root p times u is less than equal to c transpose u so this implies that u also belongs to the hyperbolic cone and hence h is a convex cone so we have been able to establish that the hyperbolic cone as its name implies is in fact a convex cone we can indeed prove that the hyperbolic cone is the inverse image of a lorentz cone so recall the lorentz cone or the norm cone so the norm cone is given by if you recall x t in r n plus 1 such that norm of x is less than equal to t and t is greater than equal to 0 so this was the norm cone let's consider the affine transformation a u equal to square root t into u and c transpose u so this is an affine transformation because here the input u is in rn while the output au is in r n plus 1 so this is kind of an affine transformation and the b is 0 here so what is the inverse image of the norm cone so this is the set of all u such that au belongs to the norm cone or in other words this is the set u such that this transformed uh, vector square root p times u c transpose u this transformed vector belongs to nc right and another way of writing the same thing so what does this equation imply it implies that norm of square root p u less than equal to c transpose u because that was exactly the definition of the norm cone we were taking the norm of the first n components and then saying that that is less than equal to the last component so here the first n components are these and this is the last component so that is exactly what we are doing and the the t greater than equal to 0 translates to c transpose u greater than equal to 0 right so any u which satisfies these two constraints is exactly the definition so the set of all u that satisfies these two constraints is exactly the definition of the hyperbolic cone so this means that the inverse image of the norm cone yields the hyperbolic cone let us take a look at another type of transformation which is the perspective function transformation so the perspective function is a function from r n plus 1 to r n so here the input is n plus 1 dimensional but output is n dimensional and the perspective function of z comma t is defined as z divided by t for t greater than 0 so this is the perspective function note that z would be in rn t would be in r and uh, in fact the domain of p is rn cross r plus plus so because we are only allowed t greater than 0 so that is the domain so this cross notation means that the first component is in rn the second component is in r plus plus you could also stack them together so that the whole vector z t would belong to rn plus 1 and the output of this is given by z divided by t in other words what we am doing is i'm taking the first n components and dividing them by the last component so that is the perspective function transformation so in terms of set the perspective function transformation of a set is given by p of x for all x in c so for example consider the norm cone so we've already seen the norm cone 
and uh, the definition of the norm cone is that norm of x is less than or equal to t t greater than or equal to 0 uh, let's exclude the 0 0 point so let's exclude the 0 0 point and let's say that t is greater than or equal to 0 so i have excluded the 0 comma 0 point so that is for uh, because i am actually dividing by t so i don't want to divide by 0 so if i exclude that point then whatever remains that nc let's apply perspective function transformation on that so I'll apply the perspective function transformation on this. So what I'm getting here is that this is the set x divided by t such that norm of x is less than or equal to t and t is greater than 0. Now what is this set? Note that here uh, I have expressed everything in terms of x and t but x has already been divided by t so what I can do is I can eliminate by substituting x u equal to x divided by t. So whatever x by divided by t is, I'll just call it u. So this set can be written as the set of all u such that norm of u is less than or equal to 1. Note that because norm of x is less than or equal to t, so norm of u is less than or equal to 1. And this transformation is valid for t greater than 0. So, so this is nothing but the unit norm ball so this is nothing but the unit norm ball in rn and this is an example of a perspective function transformation so for perspective function transformation using that we have transformed the norm cone into a norm ball in rn so we have seen two kinds of transformations the affine transformation and the perspective function transformation so that's uh, most of what uh, I had to cover about transformations and operations on convex sets.